Hi, and welcome to Meetings in Math. You are here for section 10.3, Quotient of Powers Property. Our essential question is, how can you divide two powers that have the same base? Today, you will need your Jaguar Jots on section 10.2, a pen or pencil. You may need a calculator. You need to bring your bright ideas, your creativity, and always bring your problem-solving skills. We're going to begin by examining patterns in order to make our rules. So quotient means to divide. And so when we look at this, we're going to begin by looking at two to the fourth divided by two squared. And so to do this, let's just expand out our exponents so that we have two times two times two times two divided by two times two. And we know that when we have the same number over itself, it's just equal to one. So let's go ahead and do that. And look what we have left. What we have left is two times two which we know is equal to two squared. So if we look at that a little more in depth and we examine how does that relate to what we actually had right here, how does two squared relate to the exponent four and two? Well, there's two ways that I can come up with, either by division or by subtraction. I'm not too keen on this idea of division because it doesn't look like that's actually what I did here. It doesn't look like I divided it into groups. It looks like I just subtracted to get rid of. So I'm gonna go with that idea, that if I take my exponents and I subtract them, I can get to my power. So let's examine that rule or that hypothesis a little bit further. Let's take my base, negative four and negative four, and I have it, the factor is multiplied out five times and two times again. And so I have negative four times negative four times negative four times negative four times negative four over negative four times negative four, or divided by negative four and negative four. So again, I know that when I do that, negative four over negative four is one. So this is reducing, and I'm left with three. So I know I have negative four to the third. Well, that definitely was not division. Five and two getting to three is definitely not division. I know that five and two, five minus two is actually equal to three. So I like this idea that I'm doing right here. Negative four to the five minus two is negative four to the third. So now let's try this hypothesis one more time and see if it works. Now this time I have three sevenths seven times seven times seven and nine sevens. Seven times 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 seven. And again, I know that seven over seven is going to be one. And this time I'm left with nothing on top and sevens on the bottom, but it's really not nothing. Okay, let's not get confused here. Here I kind of got away with it, not saying it, but it's really not nothing. It's one times one times one, because this is not nothing, this is one. So really on the top, it's one. And on the bottom, I have six sevens. So I have one and over seven to the sixth. So how is three and nine related? Well, definitely nine minus three is six. Absolutely. So, but when I subtract going top to bottom, I actually get negative six. And it's important that we realize that. So it looks like if it ends up being a negative six, it means that it belongs on the denominator. And that is very true. If you subtract top to bottom, it belongs on the denominator. And why does it belong on the denominator? Because I had more numbers on the denominator. So it's important that we understand that if you end up with a negative number when you do your subtraction from top to bottom, that your number is going to be on the denominator. Let's try this again. Let's do 10 to the eighth divided by 10 to the fifth. So there it is, all expanded out. Let's go ahead and reduce my tens. That will reduce nicely. And what am I left with? I can clearly see I have my 10 on the top, my ones on the bottom. Why am I not worrying too much about my ones on the bottom? Because a whole number over one, right? That's just my whole number. So here I have my tens and I have three of them. 
makes perfect sense when I go back to my eight minus five is three. So it looks like my rule is holding true. Go ahead and test this out for yourself on the next three problems and then come on back. So now instead of writing out everything, let's just continue to test our rule. Three to the 12th divided by three to the fourth. Let's just do the rule. So now we have 12 and four. So let's do the subtraction. Three to the 12 minus four. And so our answer is three to the eighth. Now let's do the next one. Eight to the seven over eight to the 12th. Now pay attention to this one. Where do we have more eights? This time we have more eights in our denominator. So we already know it's going to be a fractional answer. Keeping those things up in our head to begin with is going to make our, our job a whole lot easier. But we're going to do seven minus 12. And so we end up with eight to the negative five, which is an okay answer. You can leave it there, but let's go a step further. And we know it's one to the eight fifth. And then this last one, that's 25 over 29. Again, we have more in the denominator. So we know that that answer could be fractional. So we have 12 to the 25 minus 29, which is 12 to the negative four, which we could rewrite as one over 12 to the fourth. So what I'd like you to do now is I would like you to pause this and I want you to take a shot at writing the rule. And let's come back and see how you did. So if you looked at this and looked at what we've been doing, you first have to make sure the bases are the same. So this all has to do with the bases have to be the same. And so what were we doing? We were rewriting the base and then we, from top to bottom, we were subtracting. So the rule should have been a to the m minus n. Great job. Look at that. You took a pattern and you said, I know this pattern and you wrote a rule from that pattern. And what rules let us do is they let us take the shortcuts. You found a shortcut. So now that we understand how to use exponents when we are multiplying and dividing, we can go ahead and take these more complex problems and we can simplify them. We're going to write these still as powers. We're not going to change them into an actual number because I wanna see, can you manipulate these into the new powers that are simplified? And multiplication and division, they come into the order of operations at the same time, which means you have a little bit of freedom in how you see it and how you work with it. So everybody might approach this a tiny bit differently. So if you are looking at this and you see something you like better first, you might change it and do it a little bit differently than how I'm doing it. But this is how I'm going to start it. The first thing I'm gonna do is I treat the division symbol as a grouping symbol, which means I, simplify my numerator and my denominator as much as I can first before I start doing the division. So I look at the eight and the two and I say, okay, the eight and the two, I can simplify into five to the eight plus two, which I know is 10. So now that I have five to the 10 over five to the fourth, I know that I work from top to bottom and I subtract. And so now I get five to the six. That was a little fast, wasn't it? It's okay if you felt like it was a little fast. Remember, you can pause and rewind. So now let's look at the next one. Now this time, that division symbol doesn't go all the way across. That's okay. But because it doesn't go all the way across, I have a whole lot more freedom on how I do this. I can choose to do my fractions and reduce my fractions first and then multiply, or I can also choose to do some other multiplication across and then reduce. This time I have a whole lot more freedom. Don't forget that if it doesn't have an exponent, it's an automatically a one for an exponent. Write that in to help you out. So what I'm gonna do first though is I'm going to reduce. So that means top from bottom, I wanna reduce. So my first one is going to be D to the five minus one. And my second one's going to be D to the nine minus eight. And I am going to write those down and you are too. We're not going to take shortcuts. We are going to write down every little thing. So it is perfectly clear to anybody who's reading this what you were thinking. And it's 
incredibly important right now because there are some different ways that you might see it. And so you might do it a little bit differently than maybe what I was thinking. So d to the five minus one would be d to the fourth and d to the nine minus eight would be d to the one. Now notice I didn't put my one there and that's okay. You may have put your one and that would be okay too. So now that I'm multiplying, I know that I had that four and that one that I need to put together. So d to the four plus one would be d to the five or d to the fifth. Whew. So remember, when you're looking at these problems, please take the time to write every little step out. You may think that, oh, that's not an important step. I don't need to write it out right now. You need to write it out. There will come a time where you're not going to write the subtraction problem or the addition problem. But for right now, because we are learning it, you're writing every little step down so that I know what it was you were thinking that you were supposed to do. And that's it for the quotient property. The quotient property only has one thing you have to remember where the product properties had a lot of things you had to remember. Remember to explain to somebody why you can subtract the exponents when dividing the powers with the same base. And it has a lot to do with the fact that a number over a number reduces to one. I can't wait to see you in our next lesson. And remember, be kind to one another because we can all use some extra kindness in our lives. Bye for now.